altcoins have been and continue to be the best way to make huge gains in the cryptocurrency markets. The old saying goes, altcoins are for making it, bitcoins for keeping it. In today's video, I want to share with you five very hot altcoins that you want to have on your radar as a cryptocurrency investor. And look, there's lots of hot altcoins out there. I own truckloads of different altcoins, including the ones that I'm talking about in today's video. But these are some that I've been paying a lot of attention to recently, and I think that you should have on your radar. My name's Lark. Every day I make videos talking about cryptocurrency investing, so if that is a topic you would like to learn some more about, make sure you subscribe to Lark Davis' channel, gently tap on the thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm, and click on the notification bell if you'd like to know when I put out a new video. Now let's go ahead and get into this, and of course we do have to mention before we dive into the coins that issue number 60 crazy 60 issues already issue number 60 of wealth mastery has hit the inbox of members today this week i share some important tips to remember if you are yield farming in crypto we also have an interview with the team from cosmos which was super interesting because cosmos has been doing some incredible stuff with their uh, recent ibc release which is connecting all blockchains together creating just a monster of cross-chain interoperability DeFi Dad shared how to make 51% APY using a hot new Solana-based farm. So that is for your Bitcoin. So that's pretty impressive. Uh, Jesse had a report on the play-to-earn game called Alluvium. These play-to-earn games have been super, super hot. And this one is very, very interesting, giving us those kind of uh, Axie Infinity sort of vibes. We also have a breakdown on the top layer two scaling solutions for Ethereum. Wrecked Capital also shares some great altcoin trade setups. We have token sales, we have airdrops, much, much more. All of that for less than 10 bucks a week. So if you would like to become a member to Wealth Mastery, click on the link down below. You can learn more about becoming a member today. Now, I do want to mention one final thing before we get into the coins is that... Uh, <clears throat> Bitcoin, Bitcoin at any moment could uh, rug the whole market, <laughs> basically. So look, I just say this because in this video, I'm going to be talking about these different altcoins, but don't just run out and buy them because Lark talked about them. If what I say sounds interesting to you, let that just be a spark for you to then go and to research these coins, do your own due diligence on these coins, and of course make sure that you're implementing the proper market strategies in terms of accumulating these coins. Don't just go and FOMO into them, right? If you are looking to build a position into them, well, do that, right? And actually do that intelligently. So don't don't burn yourselves, guys. If, uh, if Bitcoin comes tanking back down, it's going to drag a lot of these coins down with it, which, hey, it's going to give you great buying opportunities for these strong altcoins. But... You know, on the flip side, you don't want to end up uh, burning yourself in the short term. Now, all of that being said, let's, let's get into this. First one, Wilder World. Now, we've talked about this one here on the channel before. This is an NFT metaverse coin. Super, super awesome stuff that they're making here. But uh, we've been talking about this coin since it was, well, basically since the token sale back in the day, but also... Uh, talking about a lot more recently um, in a video where it was sort of 20 to 30 cents, something like that. So there's been a lot of gains that have been had on Wilder already. This coin has been performing very, very well in the market. And it's still, market cap wise, only around $100 million. So it does have a lot of room to go still. I, I like to compare it with Decentraland because it, it is playing in that same space of big metaverse with all this incredible um, tech and beautiful art. And we're going to get into that in a second. But um, Decentraland currently $1.3 billion. Now, the all-time high was uh, a bit higher than that. So it's down 40% currently. So essentially, we're still looking at a, a 20x just for Wilder World to get up to the previous all-time high, for example, of Decentraland. So there's still a lot of gains opportunity left here on this coin. 
Now, this is the road map for Wilder because I think it's important to think about where they're going. They've got so much hype already. They've got so much price appreciation in the token already. And what comes next? Well, they're in the process right now actually of launching an NFT platform, which is pretty gosh darn cool. Um, they've also uh, they're releasing their loot token. But looking forward, there's some really exciting stuff coming up, including their Wilder Wheels launch. So let's go ahead and have a look at those. So they're releasing... These really cool um, generative art vehicles that you can race around in what is called Y-Ami. So Y-Ami is Wilder Miami, right? So this NFT metaverse uh, loosely based on Miami. So you kind of get those, those themes coming through in the art. And look at this. This is beautiful. This is absolutely awesome. Awesome looking car. And so you're going to actually be able to race these cars basically for pink slips, right? So... Uh, if you, you know, if you lose the drag race, your NFT goes to the other guy or you win the NFT if you, you know, beat the other guy. So that's uh, pretty damn cool stuff right there that they're bringing out. So that's one thing that's coming up. Um, they've got their guild launch for artists coming up. They got wilder cribs. I mean, that's going to be cool, right? That's going to be really, really cool. Your, your place, your crib in the wilder metaverse. They also have a Wilder NFT social network coming up. They have Wilder fashion launch. I mean, this is, of course, really cool because I was actually talking about this at lunch today. When we have all these big fashion brands starting to come in, and we already do, uh, Dolce & Gabbana, they're uh, launching NFTs. I think one of their big fashion houses was also launching NFTs. This is awesome because imagine then you can get your Dolce & Gabbana skins for your characters in the metaverse. How cool is that? That's, that's coming, and of course, yeah, Wilder Fashion. I'm not saying they're working with Dolce & Gabbana. I'm just giving that as an example. But Wilder Fashion is coming, so that's going to be a really cool uh, opportunity for your skins and stuff within um, the Wilder metaverse here. So very, very, very exciting things coming up here for Wilder. I remain very bullish on uh, this metaverse in particular. There's many a metaverse out there, but I like what they're doing. I like the art. I like the general feel of what they've been doing and of course also the delivery of what they've been delivering on and what's coming up. So I'm definitely still holding on to my bag of this. I think this is uh, one that's got a lot of room to run yet. Now let's talk about another one, another NFT focused play and that is Epic. So Epic is basically working with some incredible brands for, as they say, premium in-game experiences, digital items, and much more. So they're looking at the market of big games and the things that happen in big games. We're looking here at stuff like game skins, right? So you can change different skins within the game uh, based on which NFTs you own. And you'll have, be able to get rare NFTs from incredible brands. Same with items, in-game experiences as well. That's something that's really going to take off uh, in video games that are integrating with crypto tech or more crypto native games. So imagine you've got an NFT that allows you access to the casino, for example, within a metaverse. Or you have an NFT that is a key to a car that you can drive within the metaverse, or you have an NFT that allows you to get a song from a famous singer within the metaverse. All this stuff, right? These are the experiences that you can have with these NFTs, which is why NFT tech is so damn interesting and exciting. But Epic is working with incredible brands to deliver this, which I think is why it's one that we should be paying attention to. Now, I really need to be clear. It's not trading yet at the time that you're watching this video most of you anyway it will not have started trading yet this is actually coming up on who will be prime um, trading will start august 27th 1200 hours utc so still a few hours away from the time that i'm releasing this video but it will be coming to the market very 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 soon so keep an eye out for it and of course as with all releases new releases into the market don't FOMO in like crazy in the first five minutes. The initial hype of any new token starting trading, especially something as big as this, you can see the price go really, really crazy. Wait for a good entry if you are going to be getting yourself into this token. But 
Yeah, they're look they're working with incredible brands here. Universal Studios. Universal Studios. Come on, man. That is one of the biggest freaking names in the film industry. That's crazy. Warner Music, one of the biggest names in the freaking music industry. Just those if they had no one else they were working with, just those two alone. Massive absolutely freaking massive but of course that is not the extent of their partners they go much beyond that they've got a lot of other really cool partners that they're working with to bring these really disruptive style of nfts into the market they're also working with triple a games so they've got an incredible roster of uh, different games they've been starting to work with and that they're uh, starting to make inroads with so this is how NFTs and really crypto goes mainstream because think about how many gamers there are. Gamers are already people who are into tech. They play games. They're, they're living in these virtual worlds already. And when you start integrating NFTs into this, which is exactly why play to earn games like Axie Infinity have been so damn popular, you're going to see crypto tech taking off to the next freaking level. People will be earning NFTs in game, flipping them for Ethereum, buying more NFTs, cashing out, ordering pizza, all kinds of crazy stuff. It's going to be epically awesome. <laughs> uh, and yeah, so anyway, this is definitely one to keep on your radar. I'm excited about the, the release of Epic and of course the, what they're going to be bringing to the NFT space. I've got some pretty big NFT plays in my portfolio overall. Right, I've got Affinity, which is a very interesting NFT play. Uh, I've got uh, Ethernity. I've got uh, Terra Virtua. This is a new one coming to Lark's portfolio, which uh, I'll be holding on to for a while because I think it's going to deliver some big stuff. Next up, let's talk about our old buddy, Elrond. Now, Elrond is one that I've actually just added to my portfolio on uh, around $140. Um, now, it I did that because I think there's some really big things coming up for Elrond that is going to see the price of this asset continue to rise. Of course, again, assuming that Bitcoin doesn't rug us, you know, as Bitcoin can do sometimes. But I think there's some incredible stuff coming up. And look, Elrond, it's one of these coins that I have taken profits on multiple times. I've got my initial investment back out of it ages ago. I've cashed out multiple Bitcoin worth of profits on it. And uh, I did add some back in um, because I just I'm looking at what's going on right now with Elrond. I thought, you know what, I'm going to increase my exposure to this a little bit more. I didn't go crazy. I added about, um, you know, an extra 20 percent onto my total Elrond bag here. But um, I'm very excited about some of the things that are happening for it. And it's crazy to think that Elrond's uh, number 53 right now in the market cap rankings. And its tech is incredible. Its tech is incredible. This is basically... ETH 2.0, but now, right? They've got all the exciting stuff. They've got the sharding. You know, they've got the WebAssembly and um, this great technology stack that's ready to go. They've got a lot of great partners as well. And you see the other layer ones that have been taking off over the last week. You know, we've seen massive gains for, for Cardano. We've seen massive gains for, for Terra and Avalanche and all these guys. Well, Elrond, I feel like it's the sleeper. Right, so it's it's still got that chance for like a 10x move. At least it's going to be a lot easier for Elrond to do a 10x move compared to uh, something that's got a much bigger market cap. And I'm invested in those ones with bigger market caps too. But I think this has got a lot of room to run. I feel like it's an undervalued opportunity compared to some of these other blockchains that have been popping off recently. Now, some of the interesting things that are coming for Elrond, we have a launch pad coming. Obviously, that's going to help them deploy more products into their ecosystem. They do have a lot of partners already, but you do want to see this, this um, ability to pump out lots of new tokens, new projects, new applications to let them fundraise and get the money to be able to do that. So this is a launch pad that's actually going to have allow you to have token sales and initial NFT offerings, which is super cool. Obviously, NFT is massively popular right now. They are also, uh, they speaking of NFTs, they've just done this. Uh, they've done a licensed cricket NFT or a set of NFTs. Now, I'm not a big cricket fan, but I, I think that's a pretty big deal because cricket is a pretty big deal so it's pretty cool to see them doing that 
We also, of course, have the Maiar Exchange, which has reached uh, the chaos testing phase. So they have thousands of community members right now uh, contributing to their decentralized exchange. That's coming uh, for a wider audience really soon. So they're doing a lot of really exciting things. They're building a lot of really exciting things. And I feel like we're going to, with all this stuff kind of coming together right now, I feel like there's going to be some potentially big catalysts coming for Elrond in the not so distant future. So definitely keeping an eye on that one. Next up, let's talk about Covalent. So Covalent currently $165 million market cap. Now, in case you are not familiar with this, we have talked about it a few times on the channel before, but it's one unified API, 1 billion possibilities. Basically, what uh, they allow you to do is to have visibility to all sorts of data points across the blockchain world, as well as with multiple blockchains. So look how many blockchains they're already supporting in terms of in terms of data, right? Ethereum, Binance Smart Chain, Polygon, Avalanche, Phantom, uh, Moonbeam, Arbitrum, which is a layer two scaling solution on Ethereum, Elrond, Edgeware, Near, Polkadot, Starkware, and on and on and on. It's some the biggest players in the market, they are working with them in terms of supporting their blockchains for all these different data queries. And so this is this is all kinds of um, important information in terms of whatever it is you might want to be able to query on the blockchain, you're going to be able to do that with their service. You think about how important, how much do we spend, how much time do we spend on this channel? I'm sure a lot of other channels do too. Talking about on-chain data. A lot. Because on-chain data is damn important. And being able to make that on-chain data useful, being able to integrate that on-chain data into decentralized finance, for example, mega, mega important. Now, I think that this is one, again, that's got a lot of room to grow. We've been talking about it once more on the channel since it was worth a lot less than it's worth right now. Um, they've had a great price run recently. I think the last time I made a video talking about this, it was around 30 cents or something like that. I don't remember exactly, but it's been up quite a bit since then. But I think it's still got an incredible amount of room to grow because here's the graph. The graph does a relatively similar thing to uh, what Covalent is doing, except their market cap, 4.6 billion freaking dollars. Now, if we were to assume that even if we were to get to, get to that market cap now, let alone the market cap that it used to have, which was over $10 billion. Well, there's a lot of room left to run, isn't there? If we got to the graphs market cap where it is now, that's about a 40 to 50 X still for the price moving forward. If we got up to the level of where the graphs market gap was at its all time high, that's still a hundred X potential here uh, for the CQT token. So very, very interesting. I feel like one, again, one of those underpriced opportunities in terms of a uh, cryptocurrency. And you know, when you see this, y y it makes you realize like, you know, damn, that's, there's not a lot of coins have this. These are the investors uh, into, into Covalent. So you can see Hashed. Now, Hashed, in case you're not familiar, they're one of the biggest uh, venture capital firms in uh, South Korea. They've been behind some of the biggest names in the entire cryptocurrency industry. Binance Labs, obviously, the venture capital arm of Binance, Coinbase Ventures, the venture capital arm of Coinbase. Uh, Alameda Research, the venture capital arm of the FTX Exchange. Those three right there, like literally the top three biggest exchanges in the entire cryptocurrency industry, they all invested in this. You don't see that very often, as well as, of course, some of the other names here are quite big, like Delphi Digital. So I would not fade a project like this that has that kind of money and um, social clout behind it in terms of what these investors can actually offer. So definitely holding on to this bag for a while. And the fifth coin for today, Moonbeam. Now, you know I'm a polka dot bull. You know I'm bullish on what polka dot's doing. And I think they have a very exciting future coming up for Polkadot. Now, Moonbeam, Moonbeam is going to find itself right in the middle of the Polkadot Ethereum world. So essentially, what Moonbeam is going to do 
is going to allow for Ethereum compatible smart contracts, but on Polkadot. So they're of course going to be going for a parachain slot on Polkadot when it comes out. They actually already have a parachain slot on Kusama, which is the canary network of, um, of the uh, Polkadot network. And they're going to be bringing that as well to the main Polkadot network when it comes out. So they also already have an incredible list of people who they are working with for their uh, interoperability here, right? So look at the, the list of names here, because this is absolutely incredible. These are people who are currently building on Moonbeam. So they are building on Moonbeam in the anticipation of Polkadot's parachains coming up in the not-so-distant future. So they're already working with Moonbeam. They're already building. We have so many great uh, products here from DeFi and right across right across the market. So much stuff going on. Polka Markets, Anchor, API3, The Graph, right? Icon, the Icon Foundation, which is another blockchain. We haven't talked about Icon in a long time, but they're, they're still out there doing stuff. Balancer, it's a major protocol on Ethereum. Sushi Swap, this is one of the biggest decentralized exchanges in the world. Ocean Protocol, a major data protocol. MetaMask, obviously one of the biggest wallet providers. Chainlink, the Oracle of Oracles, IDEX, uh, and on and on and on. Injective Protocol. I mean, man, oh man, what? it just keeps going. It just keeps going. They're working with all of these people right now. All of these people are building on Moonbeam, getting ready for the exciting future in the polka dot universe. So very, very cool. I've been excited about uh, Moonbeam for a while. I'm glad to see them finally getting up to the stage where we are going to be having a, a token sale, which I'm going to talk about more just in a second, but just one final point, because again, I think it's really important when we see who actually invested in any of these uh, products. Because often when you see token sales, and there's a lot of token sales going on, right? There's a lot of launch pads and a lot of token sales going on on those launch pads. And the majority of the money behind the new token sales on these launch pads is not particularly prestigious, let's say. We have a lot of very low tier uh, venture capital firms which are just throwing money at everything and they get to put their names up there. So somebody invested in our token sale. But you have to really take notice when you have the big boys that are investing because that is, uh, I think, a really, really important um, indicator of the seriousness of any given product because these guys have plenty of money and they don't just throw their money into anything, right? All these guys out there doing fundraising, you have to ask yourself whenever you see uh, a token sale, for example, that has no big names behind it. Why not? It's not like it's not like Coinbase and Binance ran out of money to throw into token sales and to new applications. They just didn't want to invest in it. So when you see them backing um, any given project like Moonbeam, it's worth paying attention to. And of course, who is behind Moonbeam? Where's the money behind Moonbeam? We once again, we have Binance Labs. We have Coinbase Ventures. We have Fenbushi Capital, which is a major, major East Asian venture capital firm. Um, they're one of the OGs in the crypto investing space. So, I mean, this is big, right? These are really, really big names behind Moonbeam here. So again, not one I would fade. They've already got a, a, a parachain slot on Kusama. They're going to get one on Polkadot as well. I think this will be one of the um, major, major players that we see coming on the Polkadot network. Anyway, the reason we're talking about Moonbeam today is because they are having their community token sale event coming up on September 7th, which is of course just around the freaking corner. Now, if you weren't able to get whitelisted for the sale, that means that you can actually watch for the tokens to come out in the not so distant future. So you can keep an eye out for that. But definitely Moonbeam is one to keep on your radar. If you want to get more details about the token sale, then make sure you come over here onto their Twitter and get the information about that to stay up to date with what is happening with the token sale. And of course, the upcoming token release for Moonbeam. Anyway, those, of course, are just my two Satoshis for the day. These are the coins that I am watching right now, the ones that I think have some very interesting catalysts coming up that you should have on your radar. 
But your question for today, what coin did I not talk about that absolutely should have been on my list? Let me know down below in the comments section. Thanks so much for watching today's video and peace out till next time.